Alexandria City High School. Being the only high school in the city of Alexandria, ACHS has the largest student count of any high school in the state of Virginia, with over 4,600 students. With so many kids, people come from all over, taking different types of transportation. Public transit, such as the dash bus, school-funded transport, carpools, walking. Actually, we can't walk anymore. Uh, what do you mean, no walking? As of this school year, with the creation of the newly renovated Mini Howard campus, students are prohibited from using other methods of transportation aside from school-provided shuttles to move between campuses within the 13-minute passing period. Failure to comply and repeated offenses are punishable with consequences such as in-school suspension. You can't be serious. Let's talk about that. This project was derived from a seething hatred of ACPS policy infringing on our freedoms. The exigence of this project was to prove that walking and biking are viable methods of transportation between campuses. This project was a lot different than this statistics project, including environmental considerations, safety considerations, and several other factors. Part of that project was a comparison of which method was the fastest and if they could fit within the 13 minute passing period. For that particular project, it was set up so our samples were not made with random assignment. So moving or making claims comparing different modes of transport cannot be made. However, claims within the various data sets can be made. The second question we had concerned red and blue days, and if there was a mean difference between those two types of days. This was also a matched pairs t-test. We had our null hypothesis as no mean difference and the alternate as some mean difference. The final question asked if there was or was not a difference in the true mean bus time before and after October 14th. On October 14th, a school-wide walking ban was established, meaning all students were required to take the school-provided shuttles with the threat of punishment otherwise. This was a two-sample t-test, and we had our null as no mean difference and the alternate as some mean difference. To collect our data, we began recording walking times, bus times, and corresponding line times starting all the way back in August. We utilized a random number generator in one of the spreadsheets to determine which subject would walk or take the bus on any given day. Data collection would not be impacted by placebo because our statistical questions had not been formed at the time. However, data collection was occasionally hampered by external forces, such as an incident with school security for the designated walker on September the 6th of 2024 and several inclement weather circumstances. Anyways, with the complexity of this project, the data collection was a mess. It was collected in at least three separate spreadsheets, two of which included data walking, biking, and taking the bus, and all sorts of messy cross-data functions. Data collection was also sometimes physically difficult, per the aforementioned weather and other circumstances. August was definitely not fun. The heat was awful. We also had to remember to record the times we left, arrived, and the corresponding line times. And, to avoid any randomization issues, we couldn't miss any school during this period to make sure the data was accurate. That was a lot of fun. Here we have one of the spreadsheets for collecting walking data and some of the associated graphs. And of course, if you'd like to know more, we have links to all of the spreadsheets in the master document. Though, as a warning, they are remarkably ugly from months of neglect. We did some data analysis in the spreadsheets themselves. For example, this is the analysis section of the walking data with the mean and standard deviation of the walk times, line times, and other information, like total time wasted not in class walking, which worked out to be 10 hours, which is horrifying, and the percent late with and without the lines. There are also some functions with data comparing to the bus and bike times, but those are broken and outdated because they go cross spreadsheets and that never works. As for the actual statistical tests, we did all of that in a beautiful LaTeX document because I had too much time this week between my seven AP tests and needed to spend half of an hour relearning how to code a paragraph break and it does not equal sign. However, I think it's just better, so I did it anyway. The tests are not very special. We have two uh, matched pairs t-tests and one two-sample t-test as discussed previously, and all the numbers that went in are taken from the spreadsheet. Because I am not Andre Schiffer, I had to manually count out the data for the first two sets. Ah, what a helpful little... what a helpful guy. 
Anyways, if you'd like to verify the numbers and therefore the tests, have fun with that. In conclusion, we found convincing evidence for the alternative hypothesis in the case of question three, indicating that there is a significant difference in the mean bus time after the walking ban. We find this makes a lot of sense because banning walking makes more people take the bus, which congests the system more and makes it slower. We found no convincing evidence for claims about the mean differences in the case of the direction of travel or the day it takes place, which was quite surprising as it feels like it takes longer to walk from King Street to Minnie Howard than the other way around. As always, a more complete explanation with numbers and corresponding p-values can be found on the LaTeX document. So, all of this is cool and all, how does this affect us? Well, this doesn't affect us. We're seniors. I'm never going back into either of those buildings. Oh. Okay.